basically i uh, joined medicine in the late 70s and as a medical student um i became part of the students movement in the all india institute of medical sciences and also we were associated with various other social movements like some workers movements and other social movements and we started seeing that health is something that is much broader than medicine and even though i did my medical education from the orient institute of medical sciences which is like a highly specialized center for medical technology but still i felt that public health gives a much broader view of how actually diseases are caused how they are you know disease conditions are perpetuated in larger society and how they need to be controlled and tackled and uh, in the these disease palaces like big hospitals we only see the end result of very long processes and very widespread processes which are going on in society so i felt that as a public health professional i would be able to do more to actually tackle the causes of ill health and to prevent you know disease and to promote health then as an individual clinician so that's why i decided to go for public health for the last 20 years i'm based in maharashtra and we are working as a part of a team called the sathi team uh, and uh, we have been doing work on you can say three or four broad areas one is the entire area of systematically developing accountability of public health services and this has been done through various activities in collaboration with grassroots groups mass organizations uh, ngos uh promoting the whole process of you know health rights and uh, in this the most uh, sort of recent and uh, large scale process that we have been involved is something called community based monitoring and planning of health services which we are doing in nearly 1000 villages across 14 districts of maharashtra now for nearly 8 years in collaboration with the national health mission so and this has led to a led to a remarkable range of improvements and at the same time a lot of mobilization on health rights and we have done something like 500 public hearings as part of this process so that is one major front the other front is basically regulation of the private medical sector and patients rights in private hospitals because in our country 70 to 80% people go to private health facilities and there's almost no regulation very little accountability and very few groups are working on this so actually this is an important area of our work we are working on one hand with community groups to raise awareness about patients rights and on the other hand with doctors in the private sector who are uncomfortable with what is happening right now irrational care unnecessary procedures malpractices overcharging and building a constituency of rational doctors also this is the second front the third is working on nutrition and community nutrition which as you know is a key social determinant of health and where we have been doing something called community based monitoring and action to improve child nutrition in maharashtra we are again similar to community monitoring of health services here we are looking at the anganwadis the icds services and also household practices for child nutrition how to strengthen those and finally we do a range of research action research including uh, our latest uh, activity has been developing a document on universal health care in maharashtra how to develop a system for universal health care in maharashtra see actually i would like to make a qualification that what is usually called the sdh approach often tends to be somewhat limited to just a listing of the factors like water supply sanitation nutrition food security environment etc etc and of course that is the first level but i would say that we should move beyond that and look at social determination of health which is beyond just social determinants When we talk about social determinants, it appears as if all of these are like you know some random, you know, just list of factors. All of these and many more are there is a cause behind the causes. So, water supply, sanitation, nutrition, food security, environment, etc. These are the cause for ill health. But there is a cause that is behind these causes. So, if entire communities, entire populations, entire classes. you know entire groups of people are not getting any of these in an adequate manner there must be some deeper cause so if we only look at it as a problem of delivering some water supply ensuring some sanitation that will be inadequate it is necessary but it won't be adequate social determination of health looks at social structures political structures economic structures and the way in which society is actually today built and how social injustices are taking place and how those need to be addressed 
and social structures need to be changed and transformed. That is actually the more long term and more basic approach to social determination of health, which is the way that I would like to put it. In my view, in the Indian context, work on SDH actually in practice has been very weak. In the public health system, there is some lip service that is paid to it. If you look at any document, <laughs> you will find some mention like in the NHM or even in the health policy documents. But um, if you look at two things, A, uh, what uh, kind of human power is the public health system devoting to ensuring social determinants of health? And you will have to look at with a microscope <laughs> to find any official or any staff that is dedicated to social determinants of health. So you can say, okay, maybe some of the things that an MPW does are relating to drinking water quality and, you know, maybe a few other things. But actually, we don't have a dedicated cadre who is addressing social determinants of health in the public health system. And similarly, what proportion of the health budget is or any, you know, budget is related to social determinants of health, almost nil. There is a clear way in which this can be done and that is through uh, having public health officers, through having uh, you know, essential public health functions being carried out by the public health system and the public health system should monitor what is happening to water supply, what is happening to nutrition in different communities, in different areas, uh, what is the state of environment and then feeding this information to the relevant departments in a kind of empowered accountability platform. If that is done, then SDS can be addressed. If there is no human power, no budget, no structure, and it's just a you know declaration in a vague declaration in policy documents, not much is going to happen. And frankly speaking, until now in our country, actual action on the ground has been very limited. Actually, there are probably dozens and dozens of such examples, maybe even a few hundred such examples. And we have documented <coughs> a book in a book called Stories of Change where you know how these changes have been taking place but just to give one example from Amravati district in Maharashtra where a federation has been formed of the different uh, community monitoring committees and these federations are the different from the village level to the PSC level to the block level all the different kinds of members panchayat raj institution representatives civil society organizations active community members journalists all of them are there in this federation and they have, after the federation was formed, they said that when we are going to work on health issues, we won't just confine ourselves to healthcare. We have to look at education, we have to look at rationing and PDS, we should start looking at employment, and of course we should look at nutrition. And uh, this federation, they formed four subcommittees to work on each of these four areas, and they have done some very interesting work on to address each of these determinants. So for example, they found that children of migrant workers when the family migrates out, the children also migrate out and their education is totally interrupted, is disrupted. So then they went and talked to the contractor who takes the families and they also talked to the officials and they said, these children, we have to ensure that their education is not disrupted. They should stay in the taluka. So they set up a hostel <laughs> for these children of migrant workers so they can stay in the block and their education was not interrupted. So first of all, look beyond the obvious. <laughs> Don't just confine yourself to what is written in the textbook or what is told that, you know, this is a list of social determinants of health. Think beyond. Think deeper. Why is all this like this? Why is it not different? Why are so many people in poverty today and a few people are in, you know, uh, in a better off situation? Is there some deeper structure that is involved? Does that also need to be thought about and changed? Or are we just going to limit ourselves to making a list? of the problems. <laughs> so first is think deeper. Secondly, um, people are the basis for all change in society. If people are not involved, no major change can take place in any country in the world. And if people are centrally involved, any change can take place. So it's ordinary people, their empowerment, their organization, their mobilization, which is at the center. So even as a researcher, uh, we should look at you know studying these processes uh, documenting these changes, uh, documenting rights-based mobilization, social mobilization,
combination of various kinds and as an important aspect of research. So research is not just doing, you know, multiple regression studies <laughs> on certain kinds of, you know, data, but also looking at qualitative processes which take place in communities. And some, as Einstein has said, that uh, not all that counts can be counted, you know. <laughs> uh, so we have to also look at qualitative processes and, uh, you know, community processes as being very important in ensuring social determinants of